ओम भूर्भुव स्वह तत्सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवश्रयदीमह धियो यो न प्रचोदया शांति 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 सो डियर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार दिस इज माय फोर्थ वीडियो ऑन द मेटाफिजिक्स of the upanishadic knowledge of shri bhagwan ramana maharishi the topic of this video will be bhakti and gyana people discuss bhakti and gyana as separate but in reality bhakti and gyana are not at all separate what is bhakti devotion to god only thing it is in terms of dvaitvad duality the devotee is separate god is separate so devotee is surrendering to god so that is du- duality in this according to gyana there is no difference between god and atma so actually speaking there is no div- as far as advait advait was is concerned there is no difference because bhakti as well as gyana is same now let us listen what bhagwan says devotees putting a question shri bhagwan outlines a way to find krishna in the heart by protesting to all and looking on all as the lord himself is this the right path leading to self realization is it not easier thus to adore bhagwan in whatever meets the mind than to seek the supramental through the mental inquiry who am i mercy reply yes when you see god in all do you think of god or do you not you must certainly think of god for seeing god all around you keeping god in your mind keeping god in your mind becomes dhyana and dhyana is the stage before realization <laughs> a realization can only be in and of the self it can never be apart from the self and dhyana must precede it whether you make dhyana on god or on the self it is immaterial for the goal is the same you cannot by any means escape the self you want to see god in all but not in yourself if all is god are you not included in that all being god yourself is it a wonder that all is god this is the method advised in sri bhagavata and elsewhere by others but even for this practice there must be the seer or thinker who is he devotee how to see god who is all pervasive maharishi replied to see god is to be god there is no all apart from god for him to pervade he alone is devotee should we read gita now and then maharishi replies always you must read gita devotee what is the relation between gyana and bhakti maharishi replies the eternal unbroken natural state of abiding in the self is gyana to abide in the self you must love the self since god is very is the self love of the self is love of god and that is bhakti gyana and bhakti are thus one and the same that's what i was telling maharishi approves this no difference between gyana and bhakti because in bhakti as per definition of bhakti the devotee 
seeks the darshan of God. He wants to realize God. And in Jnana, the devotee revive, um, the uh, devotee realizes the self. In Advaita, self is God. So in both cases, the devotee is realizing the God that is self. So there is no difference between bhakti and jnana. Next question is put by the devotee. While doing nama japa for an hour or more, I fall into a state like sleep. On waking up, I recollect that my japa has been interrupted. So, I try again. Mercy says, like sleep, that is right. It is the natural state. Because you are now associated with the ego. You consider the you consider that the natural state is something which interrupts your work. So you must have the experience repeated until you realize that it is your natural state. You will then find that Japa is extraneous but still it will go on automatically. Your present doubt is due to that false identity, namely of identify yourself with the mind that does the japa. Japa means clinging to one thought to the exclusion of all other thoughts. That is its purpose. It leads to dhyana, which ends in self-realization or jnana. Devotee puts the question. How should I carry on in Nama Japa? Mercy replies, One should not use the name of God mechanically and superficially without the feeling of devotion. To use the name of God, one must call upon Him with yearning and unreservedly surrender oneself to Him. Only after such surrender is the name of God constantly with the man. Devotee, where is then the need for inquiry or vichara? Mercy replies, Surrender can take effect only when it is done with the full knowledge as to what real surrender means. Such knowledge comes after inquiry and reflection and ends invariably in self-surrender. There is no difference between jnana and absolute surrender to the Lord that is in thought, word and deed. To be complete, surrender must be unquestioning. The devotee cannot bargain with the Lord or demand favors at his hands. Such entire surrender comprises all its jnana and vairagya, devotion and love. So, surrender is another very important term that is also misunderstood and it is misconceived. See, what is surrender? Surrendering your ego to your real self is called surrender. But People, they say that surrendering to a physical guru is called a surrender. No. Stop the thoughts to rise from the Atma. Seizing of thoughts, destroying the mind and ego, that is actually surrender. You surrender your ego, your mind to the Atma. That is actually surrender. So, your self is God. Your self is the reality. That is the natural state of yours. So, your ego, you as an ego, must surrender to your real self. This is the meaning of surrender. 
when you are surrendering to your real self it means in a real sense you are surrendering to god because your self and brahma are same there is no difference so surrender must be understood and done accordingly so you must your ego and your mind should be directed to go towards the towards their source that is the real self so this is the meaning of surrender so it must be done with devotion and with full understanding and concepts so here i end the video about this topic so thank you my dear friend for watching and listening this important video please share like and comment and please subscribe my channel thank you thank you namaste